What's up guys, welcome to the vlog. So today what we're gonna be focusing on is how to cut a graduation using horizontal partings and also vertical partings to get your end result and why you would wanna use both. Also as a bonus, I'm gonna throw in some of the dry detail work that I do at the end. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Let me know in the comments below, hit that subscribe button and here we go. Okay, right, guys, so I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna have Carly just kind of brush through the mannequin um, using the brush vertically. So this is the Ergo Paddle Brush. Um, using that brush vertically helps detangle the hair. And then I go in with the Palmitrol Neuro Prime. This is a blow blowout primer basically, and it's a heat protectant. So I put that throughout the hair. Then I go in with my Invisible Wear Memory Shaper. That is a medium hold gel-like product. Um, the thing, the reason I like using this on a haircut is it helps keep my sections clean. And then also putting it in prior to the haircut helps me get even saturation throughout the hair as I go through and cut it. And then when I go to blow it dry, I get the hold and shine that I'm looking for. So the last thing, uh, we're gonna, not the last thing, we're gonna get into the sectioning. So the sectioning for this haircut is a center parting and then we go straight down center back then I go in and create almost like a triangle section in the very front. The reason I like creating that triangle is because when you're cutting a bob, it's all about the natural fall to me. So when I, that triangle section of hair actually is hair that wants to fall forward. So I separate it from the rest of the hair that wants to fall onto the sides. So I hope that makes sense to you guys, but we will get into that more uh, towards the end of the cut when we actually cut that section. Now the next two sections that I create are both on the side of the head. And um, basically what I'm doing is those side panels want to fall straight down to the side. So I section them away. Sectioning is so important when you're going through a haircut. It's not about creating fun shapes and all of that. Every section that you make in a haircut should have a purpose. So I go through, those are two vertical rectangular panels that want to fall straight down. And we're going to use that later in the cut. Okay, so now we're going to go straight down center back, uh, basically separating those two sides. Then I go straight across the occipital bone to right behind the ear. Now we're gonna be doing a horizontal bob, so I wanna work with horizontal lines as I go through and section it. So I'm gonna do that on both sides. I also um, like to work back and forth um, with when I cut a bob because I like to make sure that both sides are balanced. Some people like to cut just one side, then move to the opposite side. I like to go both at the same time. And then now what you're gonna see is I do a little tap with the scissor which kind of bevels the hair in and it shows me where the hair is gonna sit best right at the nape of the neck. I'm using the DB20 scissor from Mizutani. It's one of my favorite scissors. It's got a ball bearing screw, nano powder metal steel. Um, you get a really consistent cut, consistent line when you use it. Um, it's a really powerful scissor, uh, which is also available on freesaloneducation.com. Uh, so I go through and I cut my baseline. Now it's really important to make sure that you fine tune that line and make it exactly the way that you want it before you move on to the rest. Make sure it's balanced because if it's not, you're starting off already losing uh, when you're cutting a bob. So I want to make sure that it's nice and even. Also notice that I'm going in horizontally. So I want to talk about that a little bit. Um, a lot of people don't cut bobs horizontally. And what I hear in a lot of classes is that they don't cut bobs horizontally because they feel like that stacks it up too much. It gets too heavy. Well, the reason that that happens and the reason I'm not going to do this entire cut horizontally is because once you get above the occipital bone and you're cutting horizontally, your hand tends to want to sit lower on the head. Okay, so another thing that I want you guys to pay attention to is as I over direct the hair back, when it gets to the corner, you'll see that there's a little bit of a disconnection. That disconnection I want to happen because I'm over directing the hair back, passing where you would think would be the guideline where a lot of people would kind of tuck their hand in, but that's how you end up with a hole. So I like to over direct everything back, create that disconnection, then go in and fine tune the line again following that guideline that we created from the beginning. That's just a technique that I like to do. It saves me from ever having a hole in the haircut and it just pushes that little bit of extra weight where it would be a little bit weaker um, that I can go in and detail uh, after I cut it. 
So now I go in, take another section, I move about an inch up the head shape, um, half inch if they have high density, and then I continue taking horizontal panels. I'm working my way all the way up the head until I get to the low crown, then I'm going to switch to vertical partings. So just taking a little bit of the uh, new hair, a lot of the old hair, just bringing that into my hand, finding a clean guideline, and again, creating that square back. So just a straight line in the back, which creates that disconnection behind the ear, which you can see as I drop it right there, but then I'll go in and fine tune it and cut my line afterwards. So horizontal section, see the elevation coming off. If you, if you notice where 90 degrees would be coming off of that section, I'm at about 45 degrees. That's a nice medium graduation. Uh, so that's the consistency that I want throughout this entire cut. Extra over direction, the head shape around the ear kind of peels in. So you get that extra over direction, which creates that disconnection at the bottom. And then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna fine tune it. Also notice, that I had a little small hair that was missed in that part of the cut. So I go back and I cut it the exact same way. I don't just chop off that piece of hair when I see it fall down. And now I clean off that disconnection, gives me a nice thick feeling right behind the ear. And you can see that we're, we're creating a very nice balanced shape. So now I wanna break up this section, but I'm gonna start working vertically. And the reason I wanna work vertically is because if I continued to work up the head shape horizontally, my hand would want to fall down. And if my hand drops, my elevation drops, and then I end up with too heavy of a bob in the end result. So I go in vertically because that allows me to really focus on the uh, weight distribution in the vertical part of the haircut. So how much do I wanna stack this bob up? Um, how light do I want it to be? Do I want it to be layered? Do I want it to be more graduated? I can really control that. Now the hard part becomes controlling your over direction. So as I take each vertical parting, I wanna make sure it's coming straight back from the head, just like I was doing when I was cutting it horizontally, so I still continue to get the same exact shape using the bottom part of the haircut as my guideline. So now you'll see that I, I kind of create my own line because I still don't want to follow that curve down. So I still create a disconnection that I can go in and then clean off later on. So continuing down center back, vertical parting, you can see that the very top part of that section is at about zero degrees. So right where my fingertips are. But then everything from below my fingertips is definitely at a higher elevation. So you get a nice light feel, but then you get that a little bit of a bevel, the heaviness that kind of sits right at the top of the occipital bone. That's where we want it to, to live uh, for this haircut, really balances the head shape. You can see that you can see my guide very cleanly throughout. That's very important, so make sure that you're not taking too thick of sections as you work your way through. And everything is coming straight back. I like to pretend like I'm sitting in a box, so nothing goes outside that box. That helps allows me to create a square shape in the haircut. And then I go through and I clean off that line, that disconnection that we created. Now, if you wanted to create more of a triangular feel to the haircut, then you could continue to extend that over direction back and then grow the length into the front. Um, but I, I'm not looking to create a square or a triangular uh, graduation in this particular haircut. So now one thing you're gonna notice that I switch up is the fact that my fingers are now pointing down. I've talked about this many times in many videos, but those of you that are watching for the first time, the reason you wanna do that is you always wanna be combing the new hair to the guideline. Um, whether I've said that 100 times or not, and you've heard it 100 times, it's that important because anytime you're inconsistent with how you comb the hair. So if I comb the hair one way um, and I'm taking the new hair to the guide, over and over again on one side and then I switch to the opposite side and now I'm combing the guide to the new hair. I'm stretching the guide from where it wants to be, where it is guiding me to. I'm moving that and shortening the guide so then I end up with one side of my bob shorter than the other. So it's really important to make sure that you're always combing consistently. So 
with pointing my fingers down, it forces me to then comb the hair towards the inside. But doing everything exactly the same, following the guide uh, initially from the center, so what we had cut previously, and then I work my way through to the, to the uh, behind the ear. Go through and I check horizontally just to make sure that my line looks good. It should look square in the back. It shouldn't have uh, any angle to it when you pull it out. If it does, then you got to go back through and cut it. You don't want to just cut that top portion that you check horizontally because then you're not cutting the rest that's underneath it. So you want to make sure if your, your cross check, your horizontal check on this particular part of the haircut, if it doesn't line up, then you got to go back through vertically and fix it. All right, just finishing up this side. Also notice how I comb the old hair out of the way. So I'll take a little bit of my guide, push the rest of it out of the way. It's just to keep everything nice and clean. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not the cleanest person uh, in most things, but with this, with hair cutting, I like to keep it very clean and structured. That gives me the best result. Um, keeping it nice and organized. You can see how that's all coming together. To me, cutting a bob isn't a difficult thing. What makes it difficult is just not being consistent. So now I'm going through, I'm combing everything down. Still no tension um, on the haircut because I want to cut that line first. Then I'm going to go through and I'm going to work horizontally again across. And I just want to do a slight elevation. Now, we're working on pretty much a flat surface until we get to the parietal ridge. So a slight over direction keeps it at about a 45 degree angle, gives me a nice soft bevel right around the chin line um, or the, the jaw bone. So as I'm uh, kind of getting that to bevel around it, it gives a nice shape to the haircut as well. As I work up the head shape, you'll notice my elevation goes up just a little bit more. Um, that's just to keep a consistent um, flow to the elevation to that bell bevel on the haircut. So you can see that's pretty much the end result of the right hand side. Now you can see the consistency in it. You can see that it follows that jawline really well. I like this for anybody with like kind of an oval shaped face. Anybody that has more of a rounded face, I like to drop it just below the jawline, maybe an inch below it because it helps elongate the face a bit. Also somebody that has a square face works really well to drop it a little bit below as well. So same thing on this side, 45 degree elevation, uh, working my way up the side of the head. And notice that every time I move up the head shape, my elevation is shifting. So now it's higher than it was when I first started. Again, just to balance that weight distribution. Now I go through and just check it vertically um, to make sure that I have that the elevation I'm looking for. You can see a nice 45 degree angle when we look at it vertically. So I comb all of that out, clean it up, and then we'll be ready to move on to the next step. So now here's a quick tip video all in itself for you guys. What I want to do is I want to cut the front of this haircut. She's going to wear it straight down the center. So what I want to do is build a heavy center point and be able to have a nice flow backwards within this haircut so she could flip it one way or the other. So what I did was I took a guideline from the parietal ridge. So I find that there. Now I'm going to create basically a stationary guide that connects it to the one side. I take diagonal forward partings all the way across that fringe area, that triangle that we created, and I cut it right at that stationary guide. I work my way all the way through, same elevation, same everything. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to crisscross it. I'm going to go to the opposite side and do the exact same thing. 
So you can see my elevation doesn't change, still cutting palm to palm. Now that's the angle that we've created on the one side. Now we're gonna go back, create the same exact thing, which will make the heaviest point in the very center. So still diagonal forward parting, over directing it to a stationary guide and working my way through. It also balances both sides because you're taking a guide from each side and then you're connecting the whole thing together. So you can see how the heaviest point is right in the center. So when she brushes it back, she's gonna wear it down the center, but she could flip it from side to side, but it gives it a nice flow and a nice even feel to the very front. So now we're gonna use the Paul Mitchell Neuro Halo Blow Dryer. This is a really cool blow dryer because it has a fully digital top, um, which has all the heat settings, the, the airflow setting, the ion settings, and you can adjust everything through it. It's also got a magnetic air filter in the very back of the blow dryer, and it gives you an alert when it needs to be cleaned. So you just pop that magnetic filter off, clean it up, and you're good to go. That's probably the biggest destroyer of a blow dryer is not keeping it clean. This blow dryer makes it nice and easy. So I'm using my Ergo Paddle Brush, also available on freesaloneducation.com. I'm flat wrapping it around. Then I'm gonna go in with the new Neuro Halo iron to smooth out the style. Then I'm going to go into a, a little bit of detail work dry in this haircut as well. So just going through, this thing heats up super fast. It's got titanium plates. Um, it's a really cool digital um, uh, the inside is all digital, so that's a really cool feature as well. Everything's touch-based, so really like that iron. Now I go through, I'm using, again, my DB20 scissor, and I'm working the perimeter line of the haircut. So uh, this I already cut wet, so I have a pretty good line to start with, so I just want to fine-tune that line going through and uh, detailing it. Now, I think a lot of people cut corners on this kind of stuff, and they don't do all this detail work. The detail work at the end of a bob is the most important thing. It's what puts the stamp on your haircut. It's what makes it unique. So definitely make sure that that's a focus of yours in the salon. Um, make time for that. So this is the finished style. You can see it sits right uh, at that jawline. It's got a nice clean line to it. Really love this cut. Let me know if you love it in the comments below. Also, anything you'd like to see in the future. And if you made it this far in the video, then definitely let me know that as well. Hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys on the next video. Thanks so much. Right, guys like always if you like the video then make sure you hit that like button share this video with all of your friends out there and if you're looking to buy some new hairdressing tools go to freesaloneducation.com you can get Mizutani scissors YS Park combs clips brushes everything that you need to be a professional hairdresser you can get on freesaloneducation.com thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video thanks I, 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 I,